Hi, this is Pastor James coming to you with a midweek message to give you encouragement and to lift you up. And then after that, I'd like to share some really important announcements of things that are happening in the life of our community just in the next couple of weeks. Now, the first thing that I want to share with you is an idea, and it's the simple one, that knowing what to do next is not always clear. Uh, knowing how to make a God-led decision in the midst of a complicated relationship or a complicated experience is sometimes really difficult. That process of making a decision that matches what God would call you to do is called discernment. It's about discerning or figuring out what God would call you to do, and, and sometimes it takes some reflection. Now, in order to go through an exercise of discernment that I actually told you, the congregation, that I would walk you through, um, I want you to first answer this question. It's a simple one. What is an experience, just take one experience, that you've had a kind of hard time or you've been trying to figure out how to make sense of it? Uh, just one experience. It could be a hard experience. It could be a, a, a wonderful thing happening in your life. Maybe you're trying to make a big decision about a relationship. Uh, just take one experience, and with me, I want you to reflect on that experience. And I want you to recognize that oftentimes the reaction that we have to an experience is the one that we've been trained to have based on what we've seen other people do in similar experiences. So we learn a lot of our reactions from past experiences with people who are not necessarily making God-led decisions. And so now what I want to do is teach you an exercise that is going to help you to unwind some of that learning that is not always positive in your life. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is point you to a scripture in which actually Mary, the mother of Jesus, tells the people around Jesus how to respond to Jesus. And, and it shows us how the outcome is different when we have a God-led or Jesus-led experience. Now, this is a simple, simple exercise. You could find many scriptures that are similar to it, but this is one where they were at a wedding, and, and the wedding ran out of wine in the middle of the party. It was just getting going. And so the scripture says these words. It says, when, when the wine ran out of the party, um, Jesus' mother said to Jesus, hey, you know what? They don't have any wine. Uh, Jesus replied, it says, um, what does that have to do with me? My time hasn't come yet. And then his mother told the servants, do whatever Jesus tells you to do. Now it says nearby were six stone jars uh, that were used for this Jewish cleansing ritual. And they were able each to hold about 30 or 20 gallons of liquid. And it says that Jesus told the servants to fill these jars with water. And then they filled them all the way to the top to the brim. Then he told them, uh, now draw some of the water from them and take it to the head waiter or the wine steward. And so they did. And it says that the head waiter or the wine steward tasted the water that had become wine. And what we find is that this uh, wine steward actually uh, said, this is some of the best wine I've ever tasted. Where did this come from? But what we learn here is a simple, simple instruction for all of us. Do what Jesus tells you to do. Do what he tells you to do. Now, here's the exercise that I believe is really helpful for me. I share it with a lot of people who come into my office and ask for some discernment in a difficult time. We walk through this exercise and they gain greater clarity. And this is a tool that you can have and share it with other people. So here's the first part of it. You're going to want to draw a grid that's going to have three columns, okay? And as many different rows as you want to have clarity on. So each row is going to represent another thing that you're trying to figure out. In this case, we're going to have the heading column and then we're going to have two different things that we're going to try to gain clarity on. Now, the first column is the first one you want to look at, and that's a very simple thing. You're going, to, you're going to have a column labeled, what happened? That's it. What happened? Now, in that column, you're going to describe two things or three things, however many lines you have, of what happened. Now, sometimes you need a big, elaborate response, but in this case, uh, I might just write down that I stubbed my toe. In the other, column, uh, other row, I might choose a different experience that's more complicated. I lost a friend. Someone died that was special and important to me. So I have these two experiences, and you, again, might want to unpack more, but a very simple word that will help your mind to reflect on it is all that's needed. This isn't a report paper. This isn't a big, this isn't a big lecture or a written document you're creating. It's very simple. Now, second column, you're going to write down, how did it make you feel? Now, for the stub toe moment, I might write down something simple like angry. Simple. Made me feel angry. And then in the other column, when my friend died, I might say, hey, you know what? Made me feel empty. You might have, again, a sentence that you want to write. 
but it's a very simple, simple reflection of how you were feeling, which is healthy to do, to figure out how did you actually feel. Now in the third column, this is the part where the gold is, the treasure lies. This is the one where you're gonna write down what God is saying to you, or what is God is saying to me. Now the trick here is a little bit of an imagination. You have to imagine that you're actually speaking on behalf of God, you are the voice of God speaking to yourself. Does that make sense? So you're gonna write down something that sounds as if it's God speaking to you. Now, of course, there is some nuance to this. You're gonna to wanna to run this by a friend later to make sure that it matches and lines up with who God really is as represented to us clearly through scripture. Essentially, is this the voice of Jesus? And, and if you get that confirmation, then, then that will be something that's healthy to make sure that you're really listening to the voice of God and not, not supplanting or replacing God's voice with one of those other learned behaviors. Okay, so here's the great part. So in my case, I just wrote down some simple things. I felt God was saying to me, you need to rest. <laughs> you stubbed your toe, you need to take a rest. And in the other column, it was just the simple words, your friend is with me. Now, both of those brought peace in my condition and in my situation. And I've done this numerous times with numerous situations. And no matter how complex or how simple the thing you are going through is, gaining clarity about what God's voice to you in that moment, you might call this a, a tool for prayer, is so, so valuable. So now you have the tool. You can share it with your friends. Next time you have someone says, I really don't know what to do in this complicated situation. If you know someone now that doesn't know what to do, send this video to them so that they can use it and they can start to gain some clarity about what to do next. So that's some of the stuff that we do here at Highlands. We give you tools. We give you great opportunities to pray and praise along with us. They're all on the app. This video is even on the app. You can check it out there weekly. But please check into the app and you're gonna hear about all these announcements there first. We try to put the best stuff on the app first. First thing I wanna share with you is this amazing thing that's coming up. At the end of September, it's September 25th, it's a Sunday. We are gonna have our fundraiser for the second year in a row at Barrel House Brewery because of their generosity. We are so blessed to be able to use this space and be blessed with just so much, so much kindness. The staff, they're just giving of their time. So we have this fundraiser and last year, we were able to raise over $70,000 to support our budget, our Highlands Church budget that helps us to reach and meet the needs of the poor and to care for the youth of this community, to care for the elderly, to go and do visitations, to, to be there in the hospitals, to, to support people along the way, whatever they need, create communities. That's what we do, create communities where people know more about the hope and joy of Jesus. So here's my instruction for you, buy a table, or buy some tickets, or don't wait too, soon, too long, you can start to donate already so we can reach our goal of $90,000 this year. We've already raised over $15,000 through your generosity, so please keep it up. Let's try to see if we can surpass that, and we promise this, all of the resources you donate will go to meet the needs of this community, as they always do through Highlands Church. Now, the second thing that I want you to know about is the Serve Rally. This is huge. On Tuesday, September 6th at 6 p.m., we are going to have free food here. We're going to have free fun. We're going to have free games for all people who are serving or who are interested in thinking about serving at Highlands Church. We want you there. Bring all your kids. This is a great family-friendly environment. Starts at 6. We'll be done by 7.30, no problem. And if you don't have a way or place to serve, Meeting the people who serve in those ministries will revive, again, the gift of God that is within you, which is what we are studying here at Highlands right now. And the last thing I want to tell you about is Highlands internships. This is a real thing. This is something that is so exciting for us that we are just petitioning you to have your ears and eyes open for people, college students particularly, who might be interested, or people beyond college as well, who might be interested in per participating in the ministry of this church in an internship capacity. We would love to talk to you about this and see if it's a good fit for you as you're discerning, as you're trying to figure out what your next move is. In fact, I'd rather not call them internships. At Highlands Church, the word that I've chosen as our best example is discernment ships. So check it out. Let me know if you know of anybody who you think would be blessed by a discernment ship here at Highlands Church. And of course, most of all, we care about you. We care about what you're going through. 
We love you. I want you to hear this as the voice, not just of this church, but it's the voice of God saying, we love you. God loves you. God cares about you. And if you need anything, just reach out. We are here and we will help in any way we can. And if we don't have the resources here, we will do everything we can to help you get into a place where you have someone who can help you. So God bless you. We look forward to seeing you on Sundays and we are praying for you each and every day.